now for more insights into China's most recent economic data. Let's bring in Yan Liang. She's a professor of economics at Willamette University. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me again, Rochelle. So first, let's recap what this latest report covers and the key takeaways for you. Right. So um, I think most of the people have already talked about, you know, that the growth rate is still pretty solid. It shows that the economy is still steadily recovering. But of course, um, the retail sales, the industrial output growth um, have, uh, you know, slow down a little bit in their expansions, uh, lower than the expectations. Uh, but I think, for one, this is coming out from a pretty high base last year, uh, the second half of last year, and also because of very solid growth in June. Um, for example, retail yeah. sales in June, we had a massive uh, promotion activities like the 618. So that really infl inflated the numbers for retail sales. So I think um, despite you know all the concerns, I think these numbers do show that the economy is recovering well. That said, um, we do need to be, uh, so we, we do need to remain vigilant, especially for the policymakers um, to watch out for, you know, COVID-19 and also for uh, global supply chain disruptions, um, as well as domestic job creations and consumer confidence. So then talk about some of the main factors contributing to this slower than expected growth. Right. So I think the reporter has mentioned a few factors. Um, for one is the severe weather and the massive flooding in central China in Henan province, and that definitely reduced the uh, consumer spending and also disrupt the business operations. And the Delta variant, this is an entirely different animal, it's highly contagious. And based on China's zero tolerance policy, um, the authority has, you know, locked down some cities and has closed some tourist sites and also canceled some cultural events and, you know, reduced some of the flights. And so there are a lot of the social restrictions that um, definitely dampened the service industry and also reduced consumer confidence. Um, not to mention closing ports um, that disrupted, you know, shipments and production for industrial um, factories. Um, and adding to that, we also have, you know, decarbonization efforts that try to reduce, um, you know, carbon emission, energy consumption and production, and also the global factor, right? We have, right. you know, global demand that slowed down and also disruptions in countries like Vietnam. So all these added to um, the slowdown um, in the expansion. So then when you add up all these latest developments, then what does that mean for expectations for the rest of the year, especially with the restrictions and trying to curb the spread of the Delta variant? Right. So I think that's a great question. I think despite the fact that, you know, many of the research institutes and the big players, they have downgraded China's uh, growth forecast. Um, they still put the growth rate at about 8% for the entire year, which is much higher than China's own growth target of about 6%. So I think, you know, the, the markets still remain very optimistic about China's growth. But going forward, I think there are two essential uh, factors. One is how well the zero tolerance policy would work or not for the Delta variant, because again, this is highly contagious, it's very different than the previous variants. Um, and second is um, how well the policy tools can be implemented and use, utilized. Um, be it, you know, credit easing or fiscal stimulus, which I personally prefer the latter. Um, I'm really hoping the government will continue with fiscal stimulus, be it consumer support or public services or infrastructure um, to, push the, to push over the economy. And to that point then, do we know about any steps that the government can or will take to really get this rebound back on track? Right. So far, what we have seen is the central bank has released some uh, liquidity. Last month, there was a surprise RRR cut, and that released about one, uh, um, $155 billion liquidity to the economy. And just Monday, um, the central bank again rolled over the medium-term lending facilities. Um, it rolled over about 600 billion yuan. Um, at the same cost of 2.95% for the year. So um, these are some kind of liquidity injections for the economy, and hopefully that would help the medium and small size companies. But again, I'm really hoping that the government can use more of the physical tools. Um, some of the local governments, for example, uh, Wuxi um, City in um, Zhejiang province, they have just launched the groundbreaking ceremony for $1.2 billion of infrastructure and public services spending. So um, I think these kinds will be welcomed um, to help the economy forward. We certainly hope so. Thank you so much, as always. Yan Liang there, Professor of Economics at Willamette University. Thank you. All right.